And a very warm welcome to you all in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And a welcome, warm welcome to all with us online. Let's speak, oh, just briefly, our notices, uh, our meetings are as usual this week. Uh, on Wednesday at 7.30 for prayer and Bible study, uh, both here and online. And next Lord's Day at 10.30 in the morning and 6 p.m. in the evening, when God willing, I will be the preacher. And if anybody would like to use, take and use some free gospel calendars for the following, next year, please do take them from the back. We have many that we to give away and please make use of them if you can. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let us all pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we may call upon you, that we may seek your face. We thank you that our Saviour came and called men to come to him uh, and to promise them rest. We thank you, Lord, for that rest that is in our Saviour, a pardon, a forgiveness, a eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that he has come to bear our sorrows, to suffer and to die in our place, and to purchase for us uh, a sure and certain salvation. Lord, be with us this night. Pardon, Lord, all our many sins, our many uh, failings, we pray. Wash us clean in our Saviour's precious blood. And bless us, Lord, through your word. And help us as we call upon you and as we sing your praise. Bless us, each one. Uh, be with all gathered with us. Help us and have mercy upon us, in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is number 135. In Christian hymns, I found the pearl of greatest price. Chapter 47, and then from the Gospel according to John, chapter 7. Uh, 
Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. When the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand, and brought me again through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand, and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river, that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees, on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out, toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. There shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything that live shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishes that stand upon it from Engedi even unto an Eglaim, they shall be they shall be as placed to spread forth nets, their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. But the miry places thereof and the marishes thereof shall not be healed, they shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed, shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. And then from the Gospel according to John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed, among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me? And where I am thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, and out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him, and some of them would have taken him, 
but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them, Doth our Lord judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Amen. May the Lord bless to our hearts the reading from his word. Now let us look to the Lord again in prayer. Let us all pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise and bless your holy name. We thank you for your great goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we may come before you as your children to seek your face. We thank you for that new and living way that is our Saviour, that he has made that way open for us to come to your holy throne. We thank you, Lord, that there is forgiveness in him, that there is pardon, that there is a righteousness given to us, not our own, but given and purchased for us by our Saviour. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for your patience uh, and mercy with this uh, rebel race. Uh, we thank you for your mercy shown to us ever since the day that man fell. And Lord, your willingness to receive sinners to yourself. We thank you, Lord, that the gospel has been preached in every generation, looking forward to the coming of our Saviour. And now, since he has come, looking back to that record of all that he has done for needy sinners. We thank you that all that have trusted in him, that have come to him, can testify uh, of your faithfulness and of your mercy, that your promise is not empty and vain, uh, and that all who come to you, you will in no wise cast out. We thank you, Lord, for the preaching of the gospel in this land, for many centuries, for a precious heritage and for your people that gather at this time for a light remaining in this land. We do pray, Lord, that it might not be uh, extinguished. We pray, Lord, that it would yet burn brightly, ever more brightly, that others would be drawn to it. Lord, help us in these days Help your people to bear a gracious and a faithful witness. And bless, we pray, your word, that it would have free course and be glorified. Bless wherever your people gather, that they would be strengthened, would be helped. Uh, Lord, that you would build up your church and that uh, those as yet in darkness uh, would have their eyes opened. Uh, and Lord, turn to the Saviour. We thank you for these things. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over us and help us here in our witness. We pray you would strengthen us and uphold us. And though we are troubled and buffeted at times, we pray that you would uphold and keep. Bless, Lord, and watch over us at this time. Keep your people, guard us, as you have so wonderfully done from sickness. We pray that you would bless our testimony to our neighbours and our colleagues. Lord, help us in all things. Uh, we pray you would bless any that are sick, any that are weary. We pray that you would encourage and lift up uh, and help us all. Help, we pray, in the coming week. Go before us and keep us. Uh, go before us as we seek uh, to serve you in this world. Grant us wisdom, grant us wisdom uh, to walk wisely to those that are without and help us in all things. Bless, Lord, we pray, your people that suffer for the gospel's sake. 
uh, in, even in this land, but in other lands in particular, we pray that you would help them. Though their enemies seem mighty, yet, Lord, we thank you that you are over all and able to uh, subdue the, the greatest of enemies to your people. Bless, Lord, and keep your children uh, and help them, Lord, to hold fast to our Saviour. Bless, Lord, that the gospel would continue to go forth into all the world as it must do before our Saviour returns. Help us, Lord, we pray. Bless, Lord, those we know who are labour with uh, uh, and are hard-pressed and in need. We pray that you would help and encourage them. Lord, bless us now here. We do thank you for your precious word. We pray you would speak to our hearts, apply it to our hearts, grant us ears to hear and eyes to see. Bless us each one according to our own spiritual need. Bless us and have mercy upon us. In the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Our second hymn is number 338, 338, based on Psalm 84, How Lovely Are Thy Dwellings Fair. Now it 
was said of George Whitfield, the great evangelist, that if he did not have an idea what to preach, considering he preached often three times a day, uh, he would preach simply and call men to come to Jesus Christ. This great call to call men to come to the Saviour. John Bunyan wrote a whole book called Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ. And one might say the great message of the Bible in one sense is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'd like, it may seem cheating, but to take three texts from the New Testament. There are many in the Old, one might also use, but in the New too, the Lord himself appealing to men to come to him. And one finally where it is the Spirit of God calling men to come to the Saviour. Wonderful invitation, wonderful encouragement to all and to any to come to him. Uh, and if I may start with this one in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28, I'll read through to, to verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the first thing briefly to say is it is an amazing thing that God calls men to come to him, sinful men and women, children, whoever, God's appeal to come to him to find rest is an amazing demonstration of his grace. If we read the verses uh, before this, the Lord is uh, warning the people he had been ministering to, woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes, and then also Capernaum. He has been ministering in these places, preaching the gospel throughout the area region of Galilee, doing wonderful, mighty signs to demonstrate who he, who he was. And yet, by and large, the people had not turned, had not believed. Certainly, they'd taken some interest, but there was no great repentance, no great searching of heart, and turning to him. Uh, and it would have been so easy for him uh, to just, he, he warns them and warns them of what they face in terms of woes, uh, but to say no more. But yet still he cries out uh, and appeals at the end, uh, in one sense to all people, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The appeal still uh, is open. The door is still open for them to turn back and to come to him. And that is, in one sense, all he calls them to do. Uh, it is an appeal, I believe, for, for to all people, uh, when he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, it is appeal to all men, because we are all sinners. We all labor under a heavy burden of sin. Certainly, we must, in one sense, be aware of that, uh, but that is, it doesn't have to be in any uh, great sense that we are aware of it, uh, because we have that burden. We have that burden uh, of guilt upon our backs, as Bunyan portrayed, and it is a heavy burden, and sin is a heavy taskmaster uh, who will ultimately lead us to hell and to destruction. And he sets, instead of sin, uh, as an opposite, his yoke, 
that is light and gives rest to the soul. Uh, and it is an appeal to all and to any that they might simply go to him and be willing for him to take away that burden, take away their sin and to give their lives to him and to trust in him as their savior. His appeal is very simple. Come unto me, uh, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. To be saved, to be delivered from our sin, uh, is simply to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, we will not go to him if we don't believe in him. We will not pray in one sense if we do not believe him to be able to save. But with such a simple trust, all he calls us to do is to come to him and to go to him and ask him for pardon and for mercy and forgiveness. And he will most certainly receive us and take away that burden, heavy burden uh, of sin and give us in its place his meek and lowly and gracious yoke and give us rest, rest from our guilt, rest, uh, a peace of conscience, reconciliation with God so that we're no longer fighting and contending with the Lord and uh, to give us rest and ease. Uh, seems a silly thing to say, but uh, doing the shopping this week, carried four bags of shopping up the hill from the car and uh, I thought, I can't do this for very far. <laughs> and uh, carrying a log back on a walk uh, for the fire. Likewise, I thought, well, this is good exercise. It's quite heavy. Uh, and men, sadly, carry these grievous burdens uh, and, are, uh, uh, and in one sense, shrug it off, think nothing of it. But sin is a terrible burden that ultimately will uh, bring us into hell. But the Lord Jesus comes to give us rest and his appeal is simply to come to him. Wonderful, glorious invitation. Do we wish for that rest? Do we wish to be free from the burden of sin? We dare not go to the law to turn over a new leaf, to try to do our best to be good. No, just go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give yourself to him and he will most certainly give you rest. Wonderful, gracious appeal. And the next text, the next time we find him uh, calling men to himself uh, is in our reading in John chapter 7. And this is a remarkable uh, passage, remarkable appeal. John chapter 7 and verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, we're not given the, the precise details of the context here. We are given much. Uh, it was the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse two of the chapter tells us now the Jews Feast of Tabernacles was at hand, which was there one might say harvest festival at the end of harvest to give thanks for the harvest that has been gathered in to build booths, tabernacles, tents uh, of boughs to remember their time in the wilderness. Seven days uh, and then one uh, an other day, which is technically, I think, another feast but this is believed to be, well, it says on the last day, seventh day of the feast. And they had on that day uh, a service uh, in the temple, one might say a service. Uh, and part of that 
was the ritual pouring out of water to remember, to celebrate the, the rock being smitten in the wilderness, Rephidim and water coming out to, to help and to, get, to cure the thirst of the people of Israel and their animals in the wilderness. And they understood it to be symbolic of the uh, giving of the Holy Spirit. And th th those who are experts think that uh, here was the Lord, here they were. Well, it says he was in the temple, many people there. And at the end of this service, the Lord not interrupting it, but at the end of the service, when all was quiet, then he stands up and cries, cries out with a loud voice, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. It could not be in one sense more plain uh, to a Jewish mind that here was one uh, declaring himself to be the one who would give this water, give this, give the Holy Spirit uh, to anybody who would come to him. Uh, and uh, wonderful courage, uh, that's the right word, by the Lord. We read that uh, the Pharisees and the chief priests had sent officers to take him. In verse 32, there is uh, the murmuring in the discussion amongst the people uh, in the verses uh, in, in the chapter earlier. And he is warned that uh, there are those who are seeking after him. And yet he stands up in the middle of the temple, in the middle of this crowd, and cries out, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And one may say just a few things uh, about this. First, he is making a very public demonstration, uh, de declaration of who he is, and a very public appeal for people to come to him, not just to his disciples, but to all people, all who could hear, any who were there, any amongst the Jews, friend or foe, whoever it might be, his appeal was to them. Uh, he cries out so that all would hear uh, and all would have opportunity to respond and to come to him. And the Lord would have uh, all to come and any to come to him. We are commanded to preach the gospel to all nations, to every creature, every being under heaven uh, and uh, to all parts of of society uh, and all are welcome to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he uh, says simply, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Uh, in one sense, he is saying the obvious that nobody will come unless there is in some measure a sense of thirst, but it is not to limit who will come because he says, if any man thirst, if any man see uh, uh, or their need and see the emptiness and vanity of their life in this world, they are free to come to me and to drink. Uh, many uh, rich people, uh, well, life is vain and empty for all, but the Lord will receive any and all. I've heard the uh, testimonies of a couple of people, one who was a, a, a singer, a, a backing singer to uh, Bob Dylan at the height of his fame and so on, yet came to see that everything was empty and vain and ultimately came to the Lord Jesus Christ. One who was a millionaire in the days uh, well, back in, I think, the 70s or 80s, days when a million pounds was a lot, uh, meant a lot more 
uh, and yet he saw the emptiness uh, of these things. And ultimately, he would say, uh, at the end of his life, nearing the end of his life, uh, that he had put his trust in the Savior, and by God's grace, God had called him to be in the work of the ministry, and that was his greatest privilege, to teach others from the word of God. Uh, but the poor, and often it is the poor, who will more likely come because they see the emptiness and vanity of life. And I remember a man, uh, uh, an evangelist, telling me of a, uh, the father of a lady, a young lady who had come to the Lord, who had been touched uh, and had begun to see. He was a fireman, been a firefighter, I believe, in his 50s, and had come to see, what is my life? I've just been working at home, working home and so on, uh, but there is no purpose to it. Uh, and the Lord simply, in one, says, one sense, says, if any man thirst sees the emptiness of this life, let him come unto me and drink. The Lord Jesus is the one who will save, who will deliver us from this vain uh, circle of life and death and give us purpose and give us everlasting life and deliver us from the guilt and burden of sin. But the Lord's appeal is very simple to come to him. One might say, in the way that he has phrased it, there is a, a, one might consider in the crowd, let him come unto me, that men must not put up barriers to others coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must not put off others coming to the Savior, because he alone is the one who can save. And every, every soul, it is we are responsible to seek him ourselves and to come to him ourselves and not to be put off. It is, as I said, a very courageous thing. It is putting himself in danger. The Pharisees and the chief priests have sent officers to take him. They do not take him uh, because it is not his time. Uh, Verse 44, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. The power of God restrained them, and humanly speaking, they were overcome by his words, by his speaking. The officers answered, never man spake like this man, but at some cost to himself, he makes himself known. And it is simple that the Lord invites men to come to him at his own cost. He will bear the cost of us coming to him. He will suffer and die. He will bear our sorrows that we can be reconciled to God. He will go to Calvary's cross to pay the price that we can be saved and we can come to him. We cannot come at our cost, we cannot turn ourselves back to the Lord, but he is able and he uh, is willing to bear that cost, willing so that we can be saved and we can receive the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit, as was spoken of here. Uh, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The only giver of new life is the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we go to him, he will most certainly give us that life, that new life. Uh, there is that glorious encouragement uh, in the same way in Matthew 7, that God will give, uh, the Father will give the Holy Spirit to any that ask that is all that we have to do uh, and the little parable uh, about if a man what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent if 
If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things, or the Holy Spirit, to them that ask him? God is willing to give us, uh, and it is in coming to the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall receive it and be given it. But then the last uh, text is at the end uh, of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, and the wonderful text it is. Revelation 22 and verse 17. Well, I just in one sense, it is the Lord Jesus saying it. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is athirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. In case we have read the Bible and we have not grasped this, here at the end is this wonderful appeal that men might come to him, come to the Lord Jesus and receive life, the water of life freely. What does he mean? When he says, and the Spirit and the Bride say, come, well, I believe it means that the Spirit of God is the one who works in men's hearts to call us to the Savior. It is he who is at work to reveal the Lord Jesus to us, to show us ultimately our need of him. But it is he that, in one sense, appeals in our hearts, through the word of God, certainly, uh, but he that calls men to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit and the bride say, come. The bride, the church, the bride of Christ, the church. The church is called to preach and to make known the gospel. And by the outward appeal of the Lord's people and the preaching of the gospel, in whatever manner it may be, by personal witness, by teaching in Sunday school, however it may be, the bride is saying, come, appealing uh, to lost sinners. The great message of the church should be to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and the Spirit of God works with, uh, by his word, by the Lord's word, as it is uh, not perfectly, but as it is made known by the church, whether in all manner of ways, literature, publishing, giving of the scriptures, however it may be, the message is made known. And by it, the Spirit of God appeals to men. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that hears this appeal and understands, and one might say, any and all who have heard it uh, and felt it themselves and have come uh, and know that it is true, let him that heareth say, come, that all might set their voices uh, to appeal to men to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and to find the Savior that they themselves have found and to taste of that new life that they themselves have found. Uh, sometimes think, why is it that uh, we have in, in Acts, Paul repeats time after time his testimony, his simple testimony before governors, before the crowd that was seeking to kill him in Jerusalem. And at other times, he recounts his testimony uh, because he wishes them to come and to find forgiveness as he had done as the uh, uh, a blasphemer and a persecutor uh, of the church uh, and all the Lord's people who have come and tasted of his goodness may likewise say come 
and encourage those who know him not to seek and find the Lord. And then this to whom it is said, and let him that is a thirst come, whom that is needy the Lord will not turn away. We come not with our own source of water, we come as needy sinners seeking simply the mercy of God, and he will not turn us away. Uh, there is no rejection with him. A, a friend who uh, uh, is a Tamil pastor, and uh, he was, uh, before he was converted, his family were fishermen. Uh, and amongst the Hindus, which the ha Tamils largely are, that is uh, an unclean. Uh, and he, they were essentially untouchables. And he said once they were uh, preaching or going about uh, and doing evangelism, he had been converted, but doing evangelism in Sri Lanka. And he uh, went to somebody's house and asked for some water. And the, the lady said, uh, what is your work? And he knew what she was asking. Uh, and uh, he said, we were fishermen. Uh, and she would not give him a cup. She would pour water on his hands, but she would not give him a cup because in her eyes, he was unclean. But it is not so with our Savior. Though we are in one sense unclean sinners, Yet he is willing, happy to receive us, to, to give us that life freely uh, and is, is very pleased to welcome any and all who will come to him. And then briefly, I must uh, emphasize this last portion of the verse. Uh, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely, whosoever will. That is all the Lord asks. If we wish to take that water of life, we may have it freely. We dare not put conditions on who may come, uh, who may approach unto the Saviour for that water of life, the Lord makes it as broad as it can possibly be. Whosoever will, do we wish uh, for that life, new life, he will give it. We may be anxious or troubled in our minds uh, from what we have heard. Am I qualified in terms of do I have a, a strong sense of my need, of, of my sin? of my guilt that I may come to the Saviour. There's nothing wrong with having that, but the, 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 it doesn't say so here. It says simply, whosoever will. Uh, I mentioned a lady's testimony I heard this morning, how she'd been to Sunday school all through her, her childhood. Her parents were atheists. And, uh, and yet when she was in uh, her 18 and a, a believing, another believer, a young lady, witnessed to her uh, and encouraged her to truly come to the Lord. Uh, and this young lady took her along to a, uh, an evangelistic rally. She said she was uh, taken uh, by all that this young woman had said to her uh, and found it very precious that Christ had come, the Lord had come in love for lost sinners to give himself uh, and to suffer and to die in their place. Uh, and she was more than willing to respond to the evangelist call for souls to, to come to the Savior. Uh, and in one sense, she knew she was not perfect. She knew she, she obviously needed forgiveness and that is what she prayed for. But in one sense, whosoever will, do we see that this is what we need? That is all that we need. And the Lord will hear and receive us and give us that water of life freely. Wonderful, glorious invitation. And set at the end of the scriptures, and one must say, uh, 
There are many, uh, the, the, the scriptures as a whole, to show us our need, to, to set the promise before us from Genesis 3, verse 15, that there is a Savior who is willing to forgive and willing to pardon and willing to give new life. And all I would say, if we've never come to him, go to him and ask him pardon, uh, ask his pardon, give your life to him. He will not turn you away. He will receive you. He will give you new life. We may not have great uh, assurance uh, immediately that we are heard, but he will most certainly receive you. As he says elsewhere, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Uh, however sinful we have been, however we have despised his call. He will in no wise cast us out. Wonderful, glorious promise. No wonder in one sense, George Whitfield was so blessed in his labors that this was his great call and appeal to men to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'll ask him is a similar appeal, uh, number 551, just as I am without one plea.
the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh. 